Topic 9.2 Summary Single Slit Diffraction You already know that when a wave passes through a slit diffraction occurs, and that causes the wave to spread out, like this. Here's a photo of water waves uh, in a ripple tank undergoing diffraction as they pass through a gap in the barrier. And just like our previous slide, you can see that the waves are spreading out as they pass through the, through the gap. If you shine a laser through a narrow single slit and project the light onto a screen, a pattern of light and dark bands or spots will be projected onto the screen. This is an interference pattern. The bright band in the middle is called the central maximum, and the dark spots on either side of the central maximum are called the first minima. This slide is just a quick review, since you are already familiar with the principle of superposition, where waves can interfere constructively or destructively. Uh, here on the, the left, we have two waves that are in phase with one another, and when those two waves um, get together, we have a wave of double the amplitude. On the right-hand side, we have two waves here which are 180 degrees out of phase, and when they mix together, they will cancel, and we get nothing. We have previously looked at the interference pattern that results when two identical waves interfere. We know that we will get reinforcements or maxima where the two waves arrive in phase. So in these spots here, here, and here, the waves from one slit and the other are arriving in phase because the path difference is equal to a multiple of a whole wavelength. And we also know that in the places where the waves arrive out of phase, uh, we'll get cancellations or minima. So here are the minima, here, 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 and here. And the reason that's occurring is that in these places, the wave traveling from one slit and the wave traveling from the other slit have a path length which differ by half a wavelength, causing the crest from one source to arrive at the same time as a, a trough from the other source. Again, we are reviewing here, and uh, just to remind you that sometimes we will draw the uh, pattern as a sideways graph. So here is a maximum, and we're going to draw that as a high point on this graph. Here is a central maximum, which is the brightest spot. This shows up as a tall crest, a tall um, spot on this graph. Here's another maximum, shows up like this. So basically, if you turn this graph sideways, then the, the x-axis is angle, how, how far the, the light has been bent uh, to the left or right, and the y-axis is the amplitude or the brightness of the, of the wave. When waves pass through a single slit, especially if the slit is many wavelengths wide, uh, quite an interesting thing happens. Uh, we get an interference pattern. And the reason for this is as follows. If, you, if I was standing over here behind the slit, just as my observation position, and if I'm looking, I would call that the left edge of the slit. The light leaving the left edge of the slit has to travel a certain distance to get to the screen. The light traveling from the right edge of the slit has to travel a different distance, kind of like we had two slits. And if that path difference is a half a wavelength different from one another, then we'll get a cancellation, we'll get a dark spot. Okay. Conversely, if the light from the left edge of the slit and the light from the right edge of the slit travel the same distance, as of course they would in the middle here, then they're going to arrive in phase and they're going to reinforce and you're going to get a bright spot here. So you actually can get an interference pattern from a single slit. Let's take a look at the geometry of a single slit uh, light beam being projected on a screen. This is going to help you solve uh, some of the single slit problems. First, let's take a look at the variables in our single slit diagram that we're looking at here. B is a slit width, just like it was in our double slit problems. Theta is the angle uh, that the light is diffracted. It's measured with respect to this center line. 
and uh, it can be measured in degrees or in radians. L is the distance from the slit to the screen, so this distance here is L for length, and Y is the linear distance from the center line or from the middle of the central maximum to the first minimum. This distance here is Y. And notice that we get a right triangle here with one side the, with the base of the triangle being equal to L with the altitude of the triangle being equal to Y and this angle over here, theta, uh, we're going to be able to figure out uh, using our diffraction formula. In solving single slit diffraction problems, it's often useful to know the measure of the angle theta. This equation shows a relationship between the wavelength, lambda, the slit width, lowercase b, and the angle theta. A reminder from the previous slide that theta is the angle from the center line or the center of the central maximum to the first minimum, also sometimes called the dark fringe. If uh, you're asked to locate the second, third, or fourth minimum, there is an equation to do that. And uh, note that some textbooks use the variable m to count the number or order of the minimum, while other textbooks use the variable n. Uh, the IB syllabus uses n, so I'm talking about this variable right here. So the first minimum, m, would equal 1, in which case you'd have exactly the same equation as we just looked at in the previous slide. If you're looking for the next minimum, then that would be m or n would equal 2, and so on. There's an approximate formula that you can use if you don't have access to a calculator with trigonometric functions. Remember that you will not have access to a calculator when you take your IB paper 1. When using this shortcut formula, it's really important to remember that theta must be measured in radians. Okay, going back to this diagram again. Uh, once we know the value of theta that we could get from the formula on the previous two slides, then we can come back to this right triangle, and you should be able to see that we can use the tangent function to figure out L or Y, uh, depending on which of these things is being given. Wasn't that fun? See you next time.